Namaste and welcome to the Essence of Knowledge weekly meeting. This meeting is a part of the Essence of Knowledge program which is a free and online program for the seekers of path of knowledge and it is available at gyanmarg.guru for those who are interested in learning the path of knowledge. In these meetings I try to answer your questions and clear your doubts, help in your verification. and we also conduct tests which uh, is a part of the program so today we are going to start with a test of uh, bhupen uh, pranam guru ji and my gratitude to all the seekers present in the meeting uh, first question is what causes ignorance uh, the ignorance is caused by the blind beliefs that we have Uh, gathered from the society and inculcated within ourselves uh, for survival causes ignorance how do we decide the means of knowledge the means of knowledge uh, we decide the means of knowledge uh, so as to reach or to uh, get the knowledge of the our our true nature uh, so the means are the the direct uh, the best means are direct experience and logic and the other means uh, that uh, that are that can be cultivated uh, in due course in the journey of the path of knowledge so we decide our means accordingly so so that we can get the knowledge of our true nature if all that changes is false and change itself is an illusion the idea of it being false is an is also an illusion true or false yes this is true that the idea of being a part of this illusion is false uh because this is this is a, just an experience and the experience is just an appearance Uh, this is not true because this is changing we change from our childhood to young and youth and later uh, we get old and die after after that so that is not the true because we are always there and our true nature is the existence or experiencer that is emptiness so what we see is just uh, appearance which is we, uh, and that is illusion um question number 4 is how can one know for sure that nature never change nature never changes if our life itself is finite we can know that nature never changes by metaphor and using our logic because in the goal ornaments the ornaments change but the nature that is the goal the goal never changes we if, similarly in clay pots the pots change pots the clay takes different shapes in different pots in the but the clay does not change and the clay remains in every uh, shapes it takes similarly the waves change may change the wave change from uh, the waves the water takes the shapes of waves but the water does not change similarly uh, we can say that our true nature that never changes though we we our life itself is finite but we can say that the our, our true nature is infinite and eternal that never changes and what we see now in, in as this life is just a just a shape that our true nature has taken question number 5 how do we know that there is nothing else in existence except experience and the experiencer yes the, uh, there is no other third thing uh, other than the experience and the experiencer because in a, we can also say that there is no dual because this is non dual experience and experiencer as non dual and um, and that is what all exists uh, there is nothing at all the what 
what is there is just emptiness emptiness is emptiness in the sense that emptiness is uh, full of infinite uh, full of potential that is infinite and because of that that infinite potential the existence takes different shapes or which are actually actually the shapes are not real that is illusory because it is not like what that appears and as there is there are experiences there there may, there must be somebody who experiences those experiences so if those experiences are experienced by some something then there that must be an experiencer but ultimately after getting the knowledge of oneness we discovered that at the experiencer and the experience are not different it is the experiencer itself which takes uh, the shapes uh, or the which appears it, it, uh, it in the shape in in the in the shape of illusion to itself so for, uh, question number 6 is suffering is also experienced by the experiencer then how can it be always blissful suffering is also an experience by the experienced by the experiencer but when we know that the experiences are illusory and that is not true and we are our true nature is not that then the suffering seen uh, su suffering is uh, also illusory that's why the experiencer uh, does not feel that suffer because it has no senses and um, the, actually the qualities of experiencer is nothing there is no quality in the experiencer that's why uh, the uh, and the uh, suffering is also felt by the senses and uh, the experiencer has no sense there is qualityless so uh, it, it, it that's why it is always blissful because it has no qualities or no senses no mind nothing uh, question number seven is self realization is the realization that there is no self true or false this is true because self realization is the realization of our true nature and our true nature is emptiness and the emptiness is also the whole existence so it is true that self realization is the relation that there is no self because everything is i i am not this body i, I am limited by uh, limited in this body because of my senses only because of uh, sorry my th that is not my senses because of the senses of the body only uh, question number 8 senses show us a distorted view of the real experience um, actually i could not understand this question uh, but uh, senses show us the uh, real experience the senses always show us real experiences, but the experiences itself uh, themselves are false or illusory. Uh, so I think there is no distorted or undistorted experiences. All experiences are illusory. That's what the senses show us. Question number nine, how to experience oneness in everyday life without special practices? Uh, in everyday life, uh, we can experience oneness by by looking uh, from, uh, in a, at a different angle. What uh, whatever we do and whatever we see or uh, whatever we experience, that this experience is the existence, and that I am uh, witnessing this is also the existence. So the wherever there is an experience there are, there is an experiencer so there is always oneness in the existence whatever we see and whoever uh, experiences them both the both are the existence so i think this this is the way we can experience oneness in everyday life uh, question number 10 is does contemplation mean 
remembering the teachings daily no i think contemplation does not mean remembering the teachings daily but contemplation means uh asking asking questions uh, what we have been taught in the on the path of knowledge about the oneness experience experiencer and the existence and compare it with our or verify it with our logic and direct experience that uh, whether the this is right or wrong or is uh, in accordance with our teaching that is contemplation if the uh, it that is in accordance with our not teaching then that is true and otherwise it is false thank you guruji okay very good attempt by bhupen here and uh, you get uh, 6 out of 10 these are somewhat uh, low marks but i can understand because uh, today's questions are very difficult some of the questions were very very difficult in many of the questions he got half marks but only one answer was wrong that is the good thing so congratulations anyway you are in step number 4 now what i suggest is do a deeper contemplation now you have done the primary contemplation which is very good now you need to go deeper see why the answers did not arrive uh, after you listen to my explanation obviously and think about that so but you can start the step 4 videos watch all the videos start the awareness practice send me weekly reports and this time there is a addition in the program contemplation is now made into a practice so i don't know whether all of you will be able to do it daily or not but do it as much as you can and in the weekly report you need to mention what were the contemplation topics i don't want the full detail of what you thought about it or your conclusions just the topics just so that i know that practices are happening but the main practice is awareness practice that is explained in detail in step number 4 daily contemplation and awareness practice will uh, compensate deficiency in the knowledge there but nothing to worry these tests are designed to go deeper they are very challenging you have uh, enough knowledge to proceed so we will uh, now discuss uh, the answers because i think there is nothing more to do in the satsang today but if anybody has any questions they can ask it here by typing they need not wait for the discussion to finish so we'll start with the first question what causes ignorance and he got half mark there because he told one cause remember there is a long list of causes he told about indoctrination most probably he said this much and one more thing i forgot what but there is a long list so at least when counting the causes of ignorance you should mention at least 4 5 6 6 so lack of intelligence is one cause and uh, lack of guru lack of path these things cause ignorance and yes the biggest one is indoctrination by the society by the family and there are more like uh, misinformation and so on even after gr- growing up and the ignorance continues even the intelligent people they are ignorant so there must be something more than indoctrination there no problem you can go through that chapter again where uh, we have given the means of ignorance just uh, jokingly the, it is titled means of ignorance because we deal with means of knowledge most of the time uh, ordinary people deal with means of ignorance in their everyday life they do not know what are the real means of knowledge what are the effective means of knowledge and that was the second question how do we decide the means of knowledge and again he got half mark because he told the means of knowledge direct experience and logic which must be um, very easy it is easy to say that these are the means of knowledge but uh, why and how 
how do we decide that i am going to consider only these two as means of knowledge nothing else a lot of explanation is given in your program about this in the chapter on means of knowledge video there is a list of uh, criteria of why we have chosen these uh, means probably bhupen said that we choose it to arrive at our real nature to arrive at truth something like this he said but uh, that is uh, said for uh, the criteria for truth why do we choose the strictest criteria so that we arrive at the final essence of what we are but uh, for the means of knowledge this is not uh, said like this what was said there is there are many means of knowledge first thing there are many in different paths different philosophies people have adopted different means of knowledge however consensus is on direct experience and logic why because everybody found them reliable most reliable consistent they do not change with time and place and so on and there are two or three more like repeatable repeatability uh, replicable so incidentally the same criteria or same means are used in science also any kind of science it is our own experience and it is our own logic that helps us to pick good means of knowledge secondly if you check the definition of knowledge it is defined as logical connections interrelations between experiences that are impressed on the memory remember this definition this definition gives you the means of knowledge directly how it says logical connections so logic is needed to make any connections second it says experiences that are stored in the memory without any experience what will be stored in the memory nothing so experience which is direct which reaches our memory is needed that is direct experience coming from the senses which is not occluded by our uh, beliefs or biases or wrong notions that is direct experience that is a deeper definition of direct experience so see the definition of knowledge itself gives you the means of knowledge how beautiful it is you don't need anything more that is what the refutation part of the lesson tells you that we have refuted that we don't need guru we don't need the scriptures we don't need books and we don't need the non availability and so on you see which are very good means of knowledge but we don't need them they are not really essential they are not necessary so in the end we don't get any knowledge you must have uh, gone through that chapter also so means of knowledge are not chosen to get some kind of knowledge we really don't get knowledge what we get is purification and we remove the darkness we remove the ignorance that is what will happen so even though we chose the means to get knowledge ultimately we come up with only removal of ignorance cleaning of anything that is false and assumptions imaginations indoctrination that is what will happen so this is a very deep topic we start like this but we reach somewhere else we become empty of knowledge also this must be always remembered number 3 if all that changes is false and change itself is an illusion the idea of it being false is also an illusion true or false now obviously the question is so difficult and so confusing that i was not expecting any answer and his answer was wrong i actually could not even understand the answer it is very difficult to understand the question also so i'll first explain the question we are saying that all that changes is false this is our conclusion that is our criteria after that we say that change never happens remember this thing at the level of non duality we say that it is potential there is no change now the idea of true and false is based on change changing false and changing true so if there is no thing like change what is the value of our criteria then this is what the question is asking really although it is very confusing i know how can we base our decision of true and false on something which is not existing really change is not real so if changing is not real 
and changing is meaningless because in duality both opposites should be meaningful they should be present however this is uh, confusing why so i'll tell you the answer the answer is um, very easy actually that true and false belong to the level of duality however the idea that change is not there it is a potential nothing really changes in the existence because it is timeless there is no time that is said at the level of non duality oneness in oneness there is no change there is no concept of change also however there is a concept of potential infinite potential which is used to describe why do we see a change at all why is there an illusion at all that is simply used to explain what is appearing the experience is appearing why and there is no uh, reason for it actually but there is a description of it at the level of non duality that uh, it is there because there is infinite potential to be why is there infinite potential now it is it becomes meaningless that is the final fundamental so this is the answer i know it will not be satisfactory for many people so uh, again we can uh, say like this that uh, uh, true and false are subjective and arbitrary we said this isn't it we said this very clearly so it is made up actually <laughs> we have simply made it up what should be true what should be false so actually it does not challenge the criteria the fact that there is no change the change itself is an illusion does not really challenge the concept of true and false because it is totally made up you can say that is also an illusion so uh, the answer to this question should be true because it is asking true or false you could have said true however uh, that criteria that we have chosen it takes us to our true nature or nature simply nature and then it is dropped at the level of non duality there is no truth and there is no false it is meaningless it is defined only at the level of duality and it is conveniently defined so that we come to know what is my unchanging part remember that is the definition of essence or nature or true nature also called spirit in ancient time also called atman brahman and so witness and so on many names i want to know what is that and that is why this particular subjective criteria is helpful however in existence there is no truth and nothing is false nothing is false does not mean that it will not appear it can appear and it will be false after it appears nothing is true does not mean that we will never know the truth we will know the truth but at the level of duality duality itself is illusion so hopefully my answer was not confusing but everybody should meditate contemplate on these things that is why i say no knowledge will happen you will know the truth but you will also know that it is meaningless really so number 4 uh, how can we know for sure that nature never changes if our life itself is finite so he got half mark again uh, because uh, i think uh, he said we know it by logic that's why he got half mark but the rest of the answer was not satisfactory and why is there this question there because uh, we say that uh, the experiencer never changes it is forever so on so forth however our lifetime is barely uh, 100 years less than that 70 80 years so how are we so sure that it does not change what if the experiencer is something which changes in 1000 years what if it changes in a million year so these kinds of doubts arise when the knowledge is not complete when it is half knowledge but the question is very valid it is logical question so how do we know for sure there are many other uh, indicators first is there is nothing there to change change must happen in something however the experiencer is completely without any qualities i think he said this in some other answer i think so we need something to change the hot can become cold cold can become hot big can become small or some material can break and appear disappear colors can change i am giving you very simple examples 
uh, emotions and uh, states of the mind they can change but the experience has, has nothing at all it is completely devoid of qualities so we say that the concept of change is not even applicable here what will change if there is nothing it does not belong in the category of the experience so there is no question of asking whether it will change or not first of all so why do we say it will never change that is a simplification of these sentences that do not apply the criteria of change to this category which is of experiencer there is nothing here where the concept of change will be meaningful that is what we are saying that it never changes don't even think about it that is first you can say argument second is uh, change requires time time is double illusion it is simply an idea a concept a thought it is derived out of change itself so the experiencer does not experience time it is not in time actually there is no question of any change here yes we'll never know but uh, that is not because we, we our lives are short that is not the reason the reason is it is unknowable our usual ideas of changing and changing or there being something like an experience any kind of experience are not really applicable here it is so mysterious and it is not really mysterious we are trying to apply objective ideas to something which is not an object that is why it is puzzling initially if you give up this kind of uh, wrong illogical activity of trying to find something objective like changes or uh, qualities in the experiencer there is no contradiction there is no question there are no doubts so probably the person who is asking how are we so sure uh, has not thought too much about the experiencer has no knowledge of the experiencer actually no self realization that is why he heard it somewhere that it does not change and any logical person any intelligent person will say why are you you so, so sure so the correct answer is get more knowledge that's all we can say this question coming from half knowledge there can be more arguments or more logical observations conclusions like he said we know it by logic and number 5 how do we know that there is nothing else in existence except experience and the experiencer so this answer was right full marks and a very simple answer is that uh, if there is anything at all except the experience and the experiencer we will need an evidence we cannot simply imagine because this is path of knowledge imagination assumption is not allowed we simply cannot imagine this kind of thing we will demand anybody will demand evidence if you try to get the evidence it will be direct experience if it is direct experience it falls in the category of the experience because you experienced it yes there is something here but yeah as soon as you experience something it, it is an experience if it is not it will be the experiencer because experiencer is the only thing or something which cannot be experienced it is the experiencer so there is no other possibility actually whatever we imagine will remain imaginary will never become a reality or truth you can imagine hundred such things <laughs> that exist they cannot be said to really exist or even illusory because they are not manifested it is simply imagination uh, that is one answer isn't it and uh, uh, another answer is finally at the level of non duality even the experience and the experiencer do not exist independently separately they are one so i think that's why he got full marks because he brought non duality or oneness into it that if it is one then we cannot even count what is there how can we count two and we cannot count could two that means there cannot be three or four or five also it's completely illogical when all there is one which is nothing but emptiness it is zero actually how can we count anything so not only there is no third or fourth category and there is not even one category there are no categories in the existence these are all made up to understand what is happening these are all devices to get the knowledge which is simply destruction of ignorance now you must be getting 
the point of path of knowledge nothing is knowable <laughs> still we know something that knowledge is simply removal of what we thought we know so anyway good answer here and number 6 suffering is also experienced by the experiencer then how can it be always blissful it means the experiencer uh, he got half mark here because he said suffering is illusion yes that is correct suffering is illusion it is also experience it is experienced by the experiencer but the experiencer never says i am suffering that is the funny thing it is really the creature who is suffering not the experiencer and the creature never experiences the suffering actually it experiences nothing because this creature or the individual human being is itself an illusion it cannot experience anything it is so tricky that's why i said today's questions are straight from the guru field they are very difficult even i don't claim to know too much about these things so how can it be blissful but bhupen got half mark here because he said it is the absence that's why it is blissful it is the absence of suffering and happiness also and that is the real definition of being blissful blissful does not mean that it will always be happy there won't be any experience of suffering that is not the meaning of blissful blissful means that uh, they are illusory experiences that are appearing nothing is really happening now because this creature has ignorance it suffers you must have seen this if there is pain in the body who suffers not the experiencer the experiencer is perfectly okay with the pain it simply experiences the pain it will never even say that it is my pain the me and mine never comes in the picture as far as the experiencer is concerned however it is the one who experiences pain but as soon as there is the experience of pain there is a reaction in the mind of the creature i don't want this i don't want this pain it is horrible an actual suffering is this reaction not the pain the pain is simply body sending some signals because body wants the creature to take some action and it does take action it treats the pain it uh, withdraws from the cause of the pain and so on but the mental reaction is i don't want this and that is called mental suffering if this creature accepts that yes it was my mistake uh, the body is now paining let us take an example that uh, i touched the hot pan it is a big mistake now obviously the natural consequence will be pain that is simply the nervous system sending the signals that do not keep touching the pan remove your hand and there is damage in the cells of the hand so they will send signals that we are damaged do not touch anything else it will regenerate the skin will regenerate or whatever you see it will become normal in 5 minutes so these are simply signals and the experiencer experiences these signals as uh, you can say irreducible qualities that's all it ha- that's all is happening now the creature thinks there is mind there it says something bad has happened i don't want this why it happens to me only how can i do this kind of mistake it is not my mistake it is the mistake of the pan or it is the mis- mistake of somebody else so uh, that is called suffering actually that is the reaction to what has happened there is no suffering in existence plus there is no happiness also then what is there only bliss peaceful existence that's all there is ignorance causes both happiness and suffering now i know this answer is very short but more contemplation is needed and that is your homework number 7 self realization is the realization that there is no self true or false he got full marks yes answer is correct uh, it is true there is self realization does not mean that you will encounter something there no here the self means individual that is how we start we want to know what what i am and i am here is the individual in the mind of the seeker i want to know what i am they are not obviously pointing to the whole existence when they are asking this question i am talking about before self realization then in self realization uh, in progressive elimination neti neti this individual self is destroyed not destroyed is not found actually what is found there is no self there is no individual self now still the word i am remains and the still the word self remains however it becomes universal not individual 
we keep using the word i or self but now its meaning has completely changed you can say that is the peculiarity of the path of knowledge however sometimes we remove these things which cause confusion and we simply say experiencer atman witness brahman universe uh, existence whatever you like to get rid of the self because whenever we say self uh, that causes a lot of confusion especially after self realization so self realization means stop talking about self now there's nothing like this so yes very good answer by bhupen number 8 senses show us a distorted view of the real experience true or false he got half mark there because he tried although he said i don't understand the question uh, but somewhere he said that there are no real experiences all experiences are illusion he told like this somewhere although he was not clear that's why i said that you need more contemplation your your sentences your answer should be perfectly clear crystal clear so what is the clear answer to this question and there are no real experiences the question is saying senses show us a distorted view of real experience which means there is an assumption in the question that there is something real real experience but senses are distorting it senses are converting it into unreal you can take a metaphor example suppose there is a bent mirror you must have seen those mirrors that are bent if you stand in front of that you get a distorted picture a distorted image in the mirror so what do you say if the mirror were perfect i would have seen the reality of what i look my body looks but the mirror is distorting it is not perfect it is bent it is uneven so it is showing me a fake picture a false picture of what i am what i really am our senses doing this are they knowingly distorting our senses imperfect and i think nobody will say like this senses are limiting whatever there is what is there illusion only plus senses add to the falseness by limiting it not only the experience is false it gets limited by the senses you can say that is a distortion but there is no other experience there is no unlimited experience also it is very mysterious so no real experience no matter how good the senses or how sharp this instrument becomes you will never get any real experience this is another way to answer this question so the answer to number 8 will be false this sentence is false it has problems in it assumptions in it number 9 how to experience oneness in everyday life without any special practices he got half marks why did i deduct points here because oneness is not an experience and that is what i mean by straight and crystal clear answers in one sentence you should be able to answer what is this question assuming is that oneness is some kind of experience which can happen in your everyday life however he tried nicely so i gave him half mark oneness is not an experience and probably he said also that it is always oneness you need to remember it yes if you think oneness or the existence non dual existence is an experience that means it has already become dual it has already got divided now it is not oneness experiencing oneness will cause it to become twoness it will become dual that is what is happening isn't it we blame the mind for that the mind is doing it no i we cannot say really like this it is happening like this that is the proper answer and in your everyday life it will be always dual no, not non dual your everyday life will be totally dual there will be an experience there will be an experiencer and probably that is why there is no practice to remain one there is a practice to remain aware of what i am because these things cannot be practiced here the question is saying special practices no practice even special practice will cause oneness to appear as an experience it will not ha- not happen it's already there you need to simply remove your belief that it is not one it will not appear as one because appearance means it will be false and obviously it won't be everyday life experience so the question has so many mistakes or it has so much ignorance in it it is useless to even explain what is happening here 
So oneness is not an experience. Do not try to experience it. Do not try to practice about it to get the oneness. Do not try to get it in everyday life. It's all useless. Know that it is one. That is why we call it non-dual. Do not even call it one. There is a reason to call it non-dual. Only this much is known. Then it appears to, but it's not to. This much should be enough. Anything more, if you say, it will be ignorance. So again, as a homework, think more about it. Number ten. Does contemplation mean remembering the teachings daily? He got full marks. Good answer. Perfect answer. I don't need to add to this. Uh, whatever Bhupen said is absolutely correct. And this was explanation of my explanation. At least I tried to answer my these questions. These questions are very difficult. Except number one and number ten. I think <laughs> every other question was difficult, which means it was top quality. So hopefully everybody benefited from this question and answer session and uh, test. is necessary that is why it is necessary because it shows our progress on the path of knowledge or our level of knowledge where do i lack and so on that is why it is necessary simply listening will not will not give you that much knowledge and the exam or the test forces you to contemplate to go deeper uh, hopefully there are no more questions today if there are any you can ask me in the next meeting Uh, we can uh, end today's meeting here and again congratulations to bhupen very brave attempt and uh, continue your practice now come in satsang regularly so i'll see you next time thank you everybody for attending today's satsang namaste